Welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is another unboxing today and we have quite a special rifle in here. It's not one we see too regularly. This is a Steyr SSG-01. So I'm going to take everything out of this box and go through it in a little bit more detail with the box out of the way. Starting out we have a bolt, we have empty bags, another empty bag, we have a certification, guarantee card, etc. We've got various grip tools, armourers tools, grip inserts on the grip, they've sent me a bipod and we've also got um, a key mod sling swivel adapter. So one second, I'll just put these out of the way and get the rifle out, which is the main piece of interest. So Steinmannlicher, made in Austria, let's start at the front. We have one of their, well we've got a muzzle brake with a screw off thread protector there and because this is a military sort of style rifle uh, that will screw off and there'll be a specific moderator or suppressor that will fit over the whole unit so you're not actually removing anything other than that thread protector. The barrel shows their very characteristic barley twist of the hammer forging process. Key slot 4 end is octagonal in shape. We've got a full length 30 MOA Picatinny rail on here. There's a strange, quite an unusual gap there, which is obviously something to do with the barrel chain system, I think for which a, a, a wrench is supplied. Now, on the underside here, that's an adapter there for the Harris bipod they've sent with it, and we've got Picatinny rail there that's gone into the key slot. This key slot system is super, super easy to use. Um, and there's more Picatinny rail there, so you can maybe use that for a tripod system, etc. Uh, while we're in the location, let's have a look at the magazine. The magazine is a large unit, it's a twin staggered column, that is 308 size, it's actually marked up 308, 260, Creedmoor, uh, so it'll take 10 rounds of each of those, and the little holes on the side to also denote how much is in it. Again, we can see this slightly asymmetric shape, which is similar to what we see on the AI, and the release catch is at the back there. Flipping it over, the action has a dust cover, which might pop open by hand, it does, but it will pop open when the bolt operates. We'll get that in a minute. Trigger systems on the inside here. We've got a familiar Steyr safety catch system, which has got the rolling thumb wheel on the top here. But unusually, this also has a side lever, which is operable from either side to do exactly the same thing. Red for fire, white for um, bolt operable, but safe, and then two whites is bolts locked and completely safe. Grip on the underside looks like an additional AR-15 compatible component. There are some additional inserts in the case, so you can maybe bulk this out a little bit if you want a bit more reach to trigger, or you've got bigger hands, smaller hands. This looks like a pouch on the bottom, which will pop open. You can probably store a pull through or something in there if you need something for emergency barrel cleaning. Moving to the stock, we've got an adjustable cheek piece. These you need to loosen them quite a bit and then if you push them in they're actually sprung. So when it comes to adjusting you can just go like that. Now when it's in the position you want you just spin that and that locks down. The length of pull on the recoil pad is similar so you can set that where you want. And the underside of the stock here has got more picketing rails, so you need a monopod, etc. Back end, we've got a fairly rounded recoil pad, it's solid in shape, and there's a thumb wheel on there, so you can move that vertically for where you want it. The re sorry, the cheek piece has got slots on here, they look like T20 torque slots on there, so those will give you lateral adjustment so it stays under your cheekbone without damaging your jaw and there's also quite a large cutout here which makes that even better because it means your jaw's not on it. You can see the mechanism here for length of pull which is beefy if, if, if nothing else. There's a spring there, there's teeth on it and that is what effectively gives you fast length of pull adjustment yet when it's locked in position and tensioned down it is absolutely solidly anchored. Record pad is quite firm I would say it's actually firmer than, it's actually one of the firmest I've ever known. Uh, I don't think it'll matter because this is a brake 308, it's not going to be kicking very hard and that is grippy so it will sit well in your shoulder. Cheap piece shape, looks, feels good and as I say it's laterally adjustable anyway so you can offset it to make sure you're perfectly aligned behind the scope. 
what else have we got here? Right, well the other main point of interest is this is a folder. So if we push that down, that goes round and locks in place. Whether the guard's up or the guard's down. Push the button down there and it will swing back round. Anyway, while we've got it open, let's put the bolt in. But we'll have a closer look at the bolt first. This has got six lugs, so it'll be 60 degree lift and it's got various fluting and raceways on here for things like the bolt, uh, bolt stop, etc, etc. And that's, it's got quite a short bolt handle and there are a couple of marks on this bolt handle, but I think I know where they're from. So, because this is a brand new rifle, so let's have a little look. I need to remember to press that, swing that a little bit, the bolt will slot in, you can lock that back, and then the bolt is operable thus. It is a two-stage trigger. It's got a little bit of movement on it, but it does appear there are there are adjustment uh, there are adjustment screws in there. The blade itself can be altered in position. There are adjustment screws, but it looks like they're being thread locked in. So perhaps not advised to be adjusted by anybody other than an armourer. Close the bolt. Close the dust cover. And that springs open automatically. And as I say, you can use the safety catch either on the side or on the top. So if I go into the double white there, that locks the bolt. One white blob, operation, but safe. And then red is fire. And then with the butt folded, that locks in position. It doesn't appear to be that actually that's left those small marks on the... Um, on the bolt handle but uh, I, I wouldn't worry too much about that because this is the kind of rifle it's designed to be it's designed to withstand manual handling in aggressive environments the finish throughout appears to be Cerakote it's sort of flat dark earth colour it is let's face it this is a military rifle um, and I have to keep remembering I've just been using an AI you see so I have to keep remembering to unlock the latch there to unfold it so I've got a bipod for this, I'll be doing some reviews on this, probably versus an AI rifle, which will be an interesting sort of head-to-head -head look at them, and uh, we shall see how we get on with it. They're both 308s, they're both kind of designed for the same purpose in life, and uh, both available to the civilian market too. So thank you to Sportsman Gun Centre for sending me both rifles, and uh, please like, subscribe, comment, don't forget to click the notification bell so you can see the regular uploads, and thank you for watching, bye for now.